What's going on, Poker Fam? We are back. Today we are playing a 1-3 session and a 2-5 session at MGM Casino National Harbor. I appreciate y'all for being along on this journey. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm putting up uh, weekly content, sometimes bi-weekly content. So um, not going to bore y'all too much with uh, too much pre-talk, but just know this was a hell of a session from the ups, from the downs. So make sure you stay tuned, like, comment, and let's get right to it. Okay, so we are starting off this session with a very nice hand. We have ace king on the button, so I raise it up to 15. The small blind calls, and we are going heads up to a flop. The flop is actually pretty great. It is king 5-3, so we have top pair, top kicker. So when he checks, I decide to bet off 15, and he quickly decides to call. On the turn, it is a 7, and now he leaves out for 25. So it is at this point in the hand where I have to think about what he would do this with. 4-6 was open-ended, so he could have a straight, but I don't think he would lead there because it's very likely that I could have a king or aces. So I decided to call because 25 is not that large of a raise. I mean, of a bet, I'm sorry. And so we are off to a river, which comes the 10 of diamond, and now he decides to go all in. So obviously I'm hating this spot, but when I actually get the count, it's only for 55. So he could be doing this with a weaker king. King 10 is obviously a hand that he could have that has me beat, but... Seeing as that it's not for that much and I'm getting a great price with the strength of my hand, I decide to call and you won't even believe what hand he has. He has pocket aces. So I guess the hands would have gotten all in pre-flop, but he chose to play a sneaky and that's what happens sometimes at 1-3 and we lose this one and we're moving on to the next one. In this hand, we are under the gun with King Jack suited. If this was all suit under the gun, I would be folding. I promise you, you will increase your own weight by folding that hand pre-flop. But we decide to raise it up to 15 and only the plus 2 decides to call. So we're going heads up to a flop, which is king, queen, 7 with one heart. So we have top pair, medium kicker with a backdoor flush and straight draw. So I decide to bat out for 20 and he decides to put in the call. So now the turn is a very nice one. It is an 8 of heart. So now I'm looking at his stack and he actually has a little bit less than me. So I decide to bet out for 40 hoping that he'll call and then I can jam the river pretty easily because he only has about 110 left in his stack. And he does call the 40 and the river is a brick, three of diamonds. And so on this card, I don't snap, go all in. I act like I'm thinking for a second and I go all in and he does a snap call or fold. So that's a good sign. And on this card, he's thinking about it for a moment, but then he does decide to fold a king. So obviously that's a great fold by him. Kudos to him. And it's still good that we got the money from him pre-flop, flop and turn. So that's still a good pot moving in the right direction. So let's try to take this into the next hand. So here we are with King 10 on the cutoff. I decided to raise it up to 15 and only the hijack decides to call. So we are off to a flop, which is Queen A3 and I bet 15. Our opponent does decide to call and he is a tight player. So I'm not really loving this spot. But the turn, it is a two. So at this point, I want him to really commit to this pot if he really wants it. And we'll know where we're at. So I decided to bet out for pot, which is 60. And this $60 bet actually gets him to snap fold. So even if you know somebody's a tight player, just because they call one street does not mean you should shut it down on the turn. So we get the fold, we win the pot, and let's see if we can keep on climbing. So in this hand, we have ace queen in the big blind. It limps to the button and she decides to raise for six. The small blind call. So when it gets to me, there's no way I'm going to let that small bet get to see the flop. So we raise it up to $30 and I get two callers under the gun and the button. So now we are off to a flop, which is eight, six deuce. So now I decided to bet off for 35. I'm only going to get two people. So I could still have the best hand and... Under the gun actually calls, and then the button decides to go all in. So obviously I know that I'm beat, but when I look at the number, she only has $55. So it's only $20, and let's just say she has top pair. I'm getting an incredible price to hit my two over card. So I have 25% chance to win if she just has, let's say, 8-9 or something like that. So I decided to go ahead and call, and under the gun also decides to call. Now the turn... 
is a brick for me and it goes check check and then the river once again is a brick and it goes check check and she has pocket tens and wins obviously i didn't bet the turn or the river because there's no point in betting into a dry side pot so yeah kind of sucked to lose that hand right there but it is what it is so a better way to get back than with a premium we have pocket jacks in a small blind so there are three limbs to me and so i decided to raise it up to 30. that's a pretty large raise but with so many people showing interest i'm going to bump it up a little bit more and so this gets only one caller the cut off the call so we're off to a flop which comes five five eight so that's a great flop for pocket jacks obviously he's not going to have many 5x besides maybe ace five suited so i decided to bet off for 25 and he snap raises to 100. so this is the inflection point of the hand i could either go all in or fold but i don't see why if he had a five he would want to raise like that so this just seems like a protection bet with an eight so i have 170 in my stack so i just put it all in and he does decide to call he's not like snap calling he's slightly hesitant but it doesn't take him long before he gets it in so i don't know if i'm good or not but i think it's a good chance i could be he's calling for a deuce i don't know why the turn is a three and a river is a deuce and he actually shows that he had five deuce suited so he called a 30 dollar raise with five deuce suited so that just lets you know that live poker is very much alive and well so obviously we lose almost all of our stack um he only had about 150 to start so i got a cool little 20 dollars to try to build this back so i guess we're gonna have to do it the hard way i was feeling you're gonna limp three raise <laughs> well i was going to Three. No, <laughs> so I just wanted to set the scene with the pre-flop talk. So I do limp under the gun with three five suited and the small blind raises it up to 20. And I did think about limp raising, but once he called it out, that was crazy. So I just decided to call and just see if I can hit something. Obviously I'm a little tilted from the Jack's hand. So we are off to a flop, which comes ace three, four with two diamonds, one heart. So we do have a pair and a gut shot to a straight and a backdoor flush draw. So it's actually not that bad of a flop. So he decides to bet out for $25. I call. The turn is an eight. And so when he checks now, I decide to bet out for 40. And he could be trapping me with a big hand like ace, aces or whatever like that. But nonetheless, we are off to a river, which comes a deuce. So seeing as that we have a straight now, we go all in. It's not that much money. It's only $105. I didn't add on for that much. And he snap calls. So I don't know what he has, but I turn over the straight. He says he called me down light. I'm not sure about that, but we do in the pot. And actually we got some momentum going. Let's go. Hey, I'm not telling you that I always play perfect poker, by the way. So just because I play 5-3, suit it and make a straight, I have to advise you that results may vary. So we do move tables now, trying to get some different uh, vibes going. So we have King Jack of Clubs on the button. There's a hijack raise to 12. Of course, I could be putting in a three bet, but I'm new to the table. So I'm just going to call. And the big blind decides to call. So we're going three ways to a flop, which comes King, King, Nine. So we do have trips. Pretty good kicker. And when it checks to the hijack, he bets 21. There's no flusher out there, so I'm just going to put in the call, and the big blind decides to raise it up to 50. So with 50, he doesn't have uh, too much behind. I could just be going all in, but I don't want to scare him because the hijack decides to fold. So I call, and on the river, it is a brick, and he decides to go all in for 40. I call, and unfortunately, we do not win this pot but we do not lose it either. He has King Jack of Hearts, so it is a chop, unfortunately. But it's better than losing, I suppose. So this is kind of how the night's going. So you know what? I can't win no money back, so I'm going to do what any responsible gambler would do. It's time to move up stakes. Let's get to the 2-5 table. Let's go. So in this first hand of 2-5, we have Ace Jack Offsuit. We raise it up to 25, the button, and the big blind decide to call. So we're off to a flop, which comes jack six, two, all spades. So we have top pair, top kicker, along with the net flush draw. 
So I decided to go for a large bet to start off. I bet out for 50. They both decided to call. So eh, I'm a little worried that maybe somebody flopped the flush, but they could be raising here as soon as that I bet so large. So we are off to a turn, which comes the seven of diamonds. So now this is where I decide to put a little bit more pressure. Right now the pot has 225, so I bet out for 155, trying to clear up some of the equity a little bit and only the big blind decides to call. So now we are heads up to the river, which comes the eight of spades. So of course we do now have the nuts. So when I'm thinking about my sizing in this spot, I'm either gonna go for one third sizing or close to pot. And seeing as that there's four spades on the board and I have the ace of spades, I don't really know what somebody could call with unless they were slow playing a flop flush and think that I'm just trying to steal it. So I decide to go for the one third sizing roughly. I go for a bet of 200 and he actually snap calls me. So I don't like it because it makes me feel like I should have bet more. But nonetheless, we do win with ace jack, ace of spade being the nuts. So obviously we won back all the money we just lost in one three in one hand, just like that. But we're not done yet. We're still here to spin it up. Let's get it going. So I don't have footage for this hand until the very end. So let me set the scene for you. We get dealt a king of hearts. So of course you're hoping in the small blind to get dealt another king. And we do get dealt the king, but it is a king of diamonds face up, unfortunately. So the dealer takes the card back and now gives me a 10 of hearts. Still a very nice hand, king 10 suited, but not as great of a hand. So in the small blind, when it gets to me, I just decide to limp the $5. And now the big blind decides to raise it up to 30. The low jack decides to call and seeing as that I have 40% of a royal flush, I'm not going to go anywhere. And so I call and the flop is actually pretty great. It is queen, jack, 10 with two hearts. So we have a pair, we are open-ended and we are also open-ended to the royal and straight flush draw. So of course, I am never going nowhere until this river. And when I check, the original raise decides to bet out for 50 now the low jack call so that is kind of troubling but i could be putting a raise but seeing as that is three ways and i think the opponent to my left is pretty strong i just decided to call and another reason why it's good for me to call is because the original razor doesn't have that much money left i believe it's around four hundred dollars to start the hand and the royal flush draw pays 500 and the high hand also pays 500 so if i do hit I will be making a thousand dollars so the implied odds of just hitting is better than if i raise and they just all fold so with that being said we call and we are off to the turn which is the three of hearts so once again we're three ways and now i have the second net flush so i check and the original raiser decides to check and the low jack checks as well so now when the river is a five of club we do not make our straight flush or a royal flush but we do have the second best hand possible so i bet out for 175 and the big blind, he looks kind of troubled, but he says there's no point in him doing anything else besides going all in. The low jack folds after thinking for a second, and I look at the amount. It's only a hundred more dollars to me, so it's two seventy-five. And of course, I'm going to put in the call. So I call, we show, and we win. But our opponent did flop a set of queens, so actually we were in contention for possibly getting a bad beat if another queen would have came and then an ace of heart, we would have had a bad beat. But of course, that's not what happens. So that was a great little hand. And just like that, we have won all the money back. We bought, lost in one three. So like I said, if you're ever down, just move up stakes. Results may vary. So in this hand, it's the perfect example of playing scared money or seeing monsters under the bed. They both apply in this case. So we have pocket fours, we are in the big blind. The button raises it up to 30. I didn't really want to call, but the small blind decides to call as well. So I'm saying, okay, I'm getting a decent price. And the flop comes king, king, four. So we flop a full house. That is a great way to start this hand. So I check and when it gets to the button, unfortunately he checks back. So on the turn, I decide to bet out for 50 on a jack of clubs and he decides to call. The river comes, the eight of heart, and I should just be putting out a bet here, but I check it and he bets out for 150. 
I don't really know what I'm doing here because I'm checking so he bets and then I raise. But for some reason, when he bet 150, I just kept thinking about all the times when he showed down monsters when he bets on the river. But if that's the case, then I should have bet the river myself, hoping that he would just call. So I, I don't know what I did. I played his hand very bad. Obviously, I was thinking, oh, man, if I raise and he re-raise, this is going to be shitty. And I was down most of the session, and now I got back up in just a few hands. But this is just scared poker, very scared poker. So I decided to just call. And the worst part about it is he actually did have a king. He had king-queen. And obviously, that just means that I played this hand about as poor as I could. And obviously, maybe I was playing scared money because I've been playing for about eight hours and I was down 150. And now at this point in the hand, I was up about a thousand. So definitely not the way to play poker, but I'm very honest with you guys. I don't just show you my glory hands. I also show you when I play very bad. So this is what happened. You can go ahead and roast me in the comment section. I understand, but... I can only show you what I did and not what I should have did, but I appreciate y'all for watching. This is the last 10. Let's get to the outro and we will discuss the results. Alrighty, we are at the outro. I appreciate y'all for watching. I know there's a couple hands I didn't play great, so I know I'm getting roasted for that last hand, flopping a boat and getting pretty much the minimum versus king. It is what it is. Like I said, I'm just honest showing y'all what it is. Feel free to roast me. I know it's going to happen. It's all good. Um, but let's discuss the results of the session. That's what we're here for. So we played one, three, we ran for 300, bought in for a little bit more. And then we went to two, five, bought in for a little bit more. So all in all, we were in the game for 800 out of the game for 2,100. So yes, that is a profit of $1,300. Definitely a big score. Definitely a great night. Could have left uh, definitely several hundred dollars on the table because of a few hands that I played poorly, but it is what it is. This is the result. Still not bad to win that much money in only eight hours. So this is the hourly as well right here. And so I appreciate y'all for watching. Make sure y'all stay tuned for the next video. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next video, oh, matter of fact, I forgot that I have to do the announcements. So, I'm going to just list the people who won the uh, sweepstakes right here and just contact me by hitting my telegram that will be in the description of the video. I appreciate y'all. I will do this again, probably for the 2500 or 5000 mark. So, the quicker we get there, the quicker there will be another sweepstake giveaway. And now, the official, until the next video, holla.